Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we are graced with the presence of the beautiful and talented Robin Jones. Welcome, Robin, to the studio. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Leroy. We Thanks have a few having. questions to go to get through. Um, <laughs> Robin is, is new to Blue Rain Gallery. Um, she's scheduled for a show the last Friday of October. Um, this will be her first show at Blue Rain Gallery, and we're excited. Um, let's find out a little bit about Robin Jones. <laughs> where are you from? And give us a little bit of your journey to Santa Fe from where okay. you started to now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Long, long journey. So I, well, I was actually born in Fort Knox, Kentucky um, on a military base. My dad was in the Army. Um, he was West Point grad and he was in the JAG. So we were, so I was born in Fort Knox, um, but pretty quickly after that, we moved to, we relocated to Frankfurt. Germany to the military base there. So basically the first four years of my life, I lived in Germany um, and have some memories of Europe and just traveling around with my parents. And then when we moved back to the States, we moved to Ohio where both my parents are from. So I basically grew up in um, Toledo, oh, nice. Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when I was I had a couple of careers, when I was a kid, my first, I was a competitive gymnast. Oh. Um, when I was really little, I started when I was little and um, was very serious about it. And, um, you know, I think like most, you know, young gymnasts, I wanted to go to the Olympics. That was my, you know, my dream. Were you that hardcore and about it? I was. I mean, I wasn't good enough to go to the Olympics. I think ultimately I didn't have the physical body type. I don't think I was flexible enough, but um but, the but I was I, pra I the practice practiced ethics so like hard, <laughs> yeah, for mm -hmm. years, yeah, and competed. And then you know you reach a point where, especially at that point, you know, gymnasts had to peak when they were like 14, 15, 16 to go to the Olympics. And I was thirteen, and I realized that's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, so I kind of segued out of that, and then I I fell in love with at the same about the same time I fell in love with the theater and acting. Um, in the theater and Shakespeare and, um, you know, George Bernard Shaw. And so I started taking some kids theater classes um, and then did plays throughout high school, you know, with the kids theater. Um, it was the Toledo Repertoire Theater, which was the local um, community theater in Toledo. Um, so I was really involved in that. And I did a main stage show with the adult actors. I played um, Anne Frank and the oh, Diary nice. of Anne Frank. <laughs> you know, that was a big deal. And I was like 15. Um, yeah. Um, but the whole time, you know, and I was, I was doing, I was doing gymnastics. I was very serious about that. And then I was doing theater, but that, but kind of in the background that whole time, ever since I was little, I was, you know, drawing, I was really interested in drawing and painting. And I remember when I was a little kid, I, I can't remember how old I was, but I had a little, um, like a kid's oil paint set that had like real turpentine and you know and just the smell of the oil paint and i remember loving that and um i would do these lamp ma mainly landscape drawings of and i did the same drawing over and over again it was like like my ideal landscape in my dreams you know kind of mountains and with like an ocean in front <laughs> you know and i did the same drawing over and over and over again kind of like practice and, <laughs> for gymnastics right i know yeah it was very disciplined and then at one point my grandmother who was really creative um i remember she showed me because i was drawing i think with crayons at that time i was really young and um she showed me how to shade and how to um how to create texture and depth and distance you know with color and that was a revelation so then i kept doing the same drawing over and over again <laughs> after that, but with greater depth and um, You know, I think, uh, I think that's a pretty common uh, thread in, in most artists' lives. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the ritual of practice, practice, practice every day. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I, I've seen that in a few things in my daughters. And so I have my youngest daughter who's... Uh, she was in gymnastics and then got into to Aww, cheer. Oh, uh -huh. sweet! We just signed her up for the uh, Air Force yesterday, though. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's oh a wow, big that's jump. disciplined. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. no, it, it takes discipline in, in this journey of art, mm -hmm. and it's interesting that you're you're bringing that up. So, so you, were you doodling in the beginning, um, early on, or did you get formal training? Other than the influence of grandma or? Yeah, and I had some art, some just art classes in school. I had a really great art teacher in junior high school. I loved her. Um, so I had a little bit of, you know, a little bit of that, but um, mainly just through school, through grade school and kind of doing it myself. I remember 
I think I was in fourth grade. I won a little art competition. Oh, nice. I think it was just for the fourth graders, you know, in my school. <laughs> but, um, but I remember my little, my little drawing was up on the wall for a while, and I kept looking up at it. And, you know, that was really, it was really, um, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> I felt very proud. <laughs> There's lots of color. There's lots of, like, rainbow colors. So, <laughs> so in your, your journey, you ended up in uh, the Seattle area. Yeah, ultimately. Well, yeah. As a so, I worked for years as a as a as an actor. Um, I went to undergrad, graduated from San Francisco State. Um, then I went directly to grad school, University of Delaware, and got a master's degree. It was a great three year conservatory based training program. Um, and then I worked in the theater as a professional actor for years. You know, and as an actor, you either you know basically live in New York City or you live in Los Angeles. So, mo you know most actors. So I kind of went back and forth between um, New York and LA and I was working in the theater around the country. I mainly worked in um, in the States. I did a couple plays in Europe, um, which were really cool. And um, yeah, and then I ended up for a year, for a number of years in Houston. And um, I was working at a theater there, the Alley Theater for a number of years. And it was during that time that I really, that's when I really started to actually paint Seriously, um, there was a hurricane in 2008. Um, the Ike? Yeah, it was Hurricane yeah. Ike. It was, it was like a category three or four. It was a big storm that hit Houston directly. Um, and we had no power. I had no power for two weeks and couldn't go anywhere. And the streets were, you know, the, all the power lines were down. So you could, you know, nothing was open. So the morning after the storm, I just took out a canvas and I started I did a abstract painting just my feelings about the storm it was intense and it, you know I'd never experienced a hurricane before so um, and then I just kept painting and I painted you know every day and I just haven't I really haven't stopped since and I became very serious about it and very focused on it and I took a hiatus from the theater at that point and um, you know I just got a day job and really focused but so I had lots of time you know, and I'm self-taught, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had a few drawing classes here and there. At art well, you're amazing for you know. self-taught. It's oh, beautiful thank work. thank you. Ever since I was a kid, I've been drawing um, humans. I'd always been interested in um, the human figure and especially faces and emotion. And so I knew that I could draw human beings, you know, somewhat decently. Um, so pretty quickly, you know, right after the hurricane, I was painting and painting. I, I segued into figurative, back into figurative um, drawing and painting and, um, and then just developed from there. And, and initially I was doing a lot of myself because I was, you know, a model that was right there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, I could, you know, I was available. Well, that, that's funny that you even admit that because a lot of, a lot of painters that paint figurative, yeah. um, you could see their own facial parts in their paintings yeah right? yeah oh you try to or you use yourself but then you try to make it not yourself exactly you know but it's still you yes. <laughs> you know it's like that happens that happens a lot yeah it's i know amazing. i'm like i'm gonna change my eye color <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody looks at it and they're like that's you <laughs> like, <laughs> oh well Great. yeah so a lot of my early paintings were moi um and I think as I got more involved in um, environmental activism and animal, you know, rights activism, that those kind of started to merge, and I was trying to figure out a way to merge my love of figurative painting with um, my activism and my love of the natural world, and um, you know, and and what I see happening to it, both good and bad. Um, so that's kind of been a journey, you know, and that's where I am um, today, and that's what I. That's what I mainly focus on. Yeah, and, yeah. and we want to talk about that. Uh, uh, but before that, uh, tell me about what's different and unique about Robin Jones. Because I can tell you, <laughs> but I want you to tell us. <laughs> about my How, work? Yeah, about your work. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I love using metal leaf. That's not unique. You know, that goes back to, you know, pre-Renaissance Madonna and Child. Um, maybe it's the combination of the metal leaf, the activism, the, um, the and, and um, in a lot of my paintings, especially when I do insects, um, I make them larger than, than life and in proportion to the human um, to symbolize their importance in the ecosystems and, you know, to our, our continued you know, survival well, I, um, and well-being. <laughs> you know. I've, I've started following you on Instagram a few years back, 
And, really? Yeah. Oh. And um, one of the unique pieces that I liked was the bee. Yeah. The girl and the bee. Yeah. And well, we'll post one of those uh, so the audience can see this. But uh, yeah. the detail to the bee, the hair on the, the back of the bee, everything is just beautiful. Oh, so how you, you captured that. And that's what caught my attention. And then um, understanding what you were about and uh, yeah. the activist point of view of environment mm -hmm. um, that you portray. But in a very, and we talked about this before, but in a subtle way. It's not in your face about it, um, mm -hmm. but they're, they're beautiful stories. And um, the way you're uh, connecting people with animals that are on the verge of extinction or that are very special mm -hmm. um, I, is yeah, like, for example, the octopus. The octopus. Right? And I like yeah. what you wrote about that. Uh, tell, us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the octopus. What's special about an octopus? Oh, they're incredible. I mean, they're incredible beings. And I really fell in love with the octopus. I mean, I've always thought they were fascinating. You know, they're just, they're, they're like kind of alien creatures, you know. And, and for being so smart, you know, they only live about a year, which is incredible. They can, I mean, because they, you know, they use tools. They remember things for months. They're, um... You know they're so resourceful they can change their color and their you know their physical being and um but i really was fascinated by my octopus teacher <laughs> the, the, the the beautiful the, documentary the that documentary. won the academy award this year yeah i mean it was beautiful the relationship between the human and another species this octopus is really you know it, it really um i love that it it showed how you know connected we are um, and how we can have these interactions, you know, with other species that are, you know, that are really beautiful. And so that, that painting is really, I mean, there are, you know, like most species on the planet now there, you know, um, there are, there are specific species of octopus that are threatened, you know, but this painting was more about, um, the celebration of that interconnectedness, that, that relationship that was really you know, it was really beautiful. Yeah, I was uh, I was reading the write up, and uh, the other thing that that on on the environmental end was the farming of octopus. Yeah, right? and um, yeah. that that was it brought that to my attention because I had not thought about that. Yeah, and is that for uh, sushi bars and stuff like that? It is. Yeah. yeah, it's just demand for octopus in food around the world. And I don't think I want to eat octopus anymore. Aw, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love sushi, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. another another painting that that caught my eye is the one behind you uh, mm -hmm. with the elephant. Yeah. And um, I don't know is that an African elephant or what what type of species of elephant is that? Um, that I think was an Asian. It's an Asian the elephant. Asian. Um, yeah, and they're. Um, Are they bigger? I'm not or sure what the difference is. I think it's more. They might be a little smaller. Maybe smaller. But they're, mm -hmm. yeah, they're also, they have their populations, like those in specific parts of Africa, but elephants, you know, in general, their populations have dwindled, you know, so dramatically, um, you know, in the, in the, the last decade. Well, the ivory decades. trade and all that stuff has impacted them yeah. as well, right? Yeah, the ivory trade, poaching, um, habitat destruction, um, have you know um, people building overpopulation mm -hmm. and they're getting displaced and um, yeah it's all of that and climate change and you know ecosystem change the it's, the ecosystem is what I get I mean, because that's so important we don't most of us don't think about it yeah um, I was just at a, a friend's ranch and uh, he, he comes from significant funds and he, he bought this really large uh, canyon, <laughs> you could oh. say, but it has it has tributaries that, that lead into the Rio Grande. Oh, yeah. And he redid the entire ecosystem to be eco-friendly to all the animals, including the fish. Um. And the fish in there, if you catch them, uh, they're huge. They're like 20 inches to 35 inches, and they're huge rainbows. You don't see stuff like that. But wow. when we think Good about reconstructing the environment into a proper way that it used to be before yeah. man impacted it, uh, it, it can be very beautiful, but it, yeah. it's that that leads me down that train of thought. Um, mm -hmm. I I really get what you're what you're painting. Um, yeah. Now you've you've also interacted with these species, uh, human 
species. Mostly young girls for the most part. Yes. I haven't seen any uh, young boys. <laughs> I yet. know I need to do some boys. Uh-huh. I will do some boys. <laughs> I have painted my nephew uh, a have few you? times. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I will do that. So give us some it, of your 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 favorite stories of the youthful young ladies that you've interacted with, the um, endangered species. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the there figures. Was, there's Greta was one of them, right? Thunberg? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there's a painting that's actually in my show that's not. It's not technically her but it's it's an homage to her and so i'm so inspired by all of the young climate activists they're you know they're just they're very vocal and they're very you know um persistent and dedicated and well-spoken and and just you know holding officials accountable you know and governments accountable and um you know for inaction so that yeah so that's um, and I used her sign, so I have her sign in the in the painting. But I've also there's another one that's coming. I think for that you even did it in German. Yeah, it's not German. It's um, she's Swedish. 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 Okay, yeah. Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. Sorry. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like her famous sign that she's yeah. you know when she started years ago in front of the parliament all mm-hmm. by herself. You know, yeah, it's that sign. So, um, but I have another one that's coming for the show that's of um, another climate activist, Vanessa Nakate, um, and we've only just. Um, gone back and forth a little bit on Instagram and she, but I admire her so much and she's um, she's a little older than Greta but kind of in the same group um, and uh, she's from Uganda and she's also very inspiring very you know um, really intelligent great you know just great speaker and um, so I did a painting of her with some endangered um, butterflies from Uganda mm. so that'll that's probably going to yeah. be beautiful as well <laughs> I'm just so excited Hopefully. about all your work so Start collecting it myself. <laughs> Actually, please. my wife, I, my I wife, my wife is uh, she's putting the clamps on me. She's like, Aww. you better get, you better get one of her paintings. So. <laughs> I would be honored. Yeah, well, Thank you. we're we're honored to have <laughs> you, and we appreciate you taking time coming in here today. Yeah. And I hope uh, our audience uh, will take time and explore your work. Um, we're going to be posting a little bit of editorial with every painting uh, that Robin does, so you can get a better idea of where she's coming from and what she's trying to portray most of the time you just need to look at the work and let it sink in and you get the story pretty quick Aww. so thank you robin thanks so much you're a genius thank you. unto yourself oh, well, that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. thank yeah, you, thank you. <laughs> well i'd like to encourage everybody to uh, subscribe to our podcast on itunes or any of the platforms uh, you can also get to us from blueraingallery.com on the menu uh, it has podcasts you can just click it and watch it there uh also like to encourage everybody to go to blue rain gallery print shop or blue rain print shop.com uh to bring art into your everyday life thanks again <laughs>